Welcome back to Worlds 2022 in the State Farm Analyst Desk as DRX loads back onto the rift here against GAM Esports. While GAM Esports is effectively eliminated from the competition, can still play spoiler here in a big way as Top is currently outside that top two picture. And DRX <laughs> is the team that they want to catch up and beat. But first, let's talk about the first time they met because I think we've seen already a very different version of GAM today than we saw the last time around. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily different version as in they necessarily stopped these invades because we did see one again in their first game, but obviously it did not go as poorly. And more importantly, it was really cool in the game they won against Top Esports to see that Karthus come out for Levi and show how much of a carry he can be. I think as well, you're actually getting a chance to see what Gam is capable of. Because one of the big things that we saw was, you know, they went for Invade against Top Esports in that first week, completely obliterated. They go for the Invade again uh, in one of their later games, completely obliterated. You're actually getting to see them now go into these fights with a little bit more of an even footing. And you're getting to see people like Vi really step up from that bot side as well. This guy has been an incredible support for so long in the VCN. Mm -hmm. And it's great that we're getting to see him on the main stage. Yeah, that dive that he had in the mid lane on that one and his set game today earlier oh, yeah. his first game of the day was beautiful even in that loss that they had much yep. earlier on versus rogue was fantastic so we want to see more of that from Bia. we want to be able to see him take the fights and they're if their comps are looking like that they've already created a lot more new fans today know, off right? their gameplay <laughs> they will make more absolutely but they are going to have to perform at their peak level we consider some of the individuals they're going up against when i think about drx's run here at the tournament one name has been top of mind and that's zeka yeah i mean i think zeka has been again a standout performer for drx that maybe people didn't expect if they were just thinking obviously the joke and the meme was that it's just deft 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 and deft deft you know so um he's really really showed up massively starting in the play-ins when people kind of saw him popping off and then later in this group as well he's been such a formidable opponent yeah, and I mean, it's been really impressive to see Zeke kind of climb up, right? When you look back, he was handpicked by Coma to come across to Vici Gaming in the LPL. And that was where he first initially got his start. But now coming back towards DRX, he's really stepped up. And as Emily was saying, a massive carry for the squad. And it's great to see him flourishing and kind of stepping up to have these big moments in team fights and take over when it comes to these early skirmishes. Yeah, Raz, as I hand things over to you, I just want to note for the audience that these were Zeke's stats coming into the day. So they don't include the performance that he just put up in that third game of the day. Likely, better, likely bettering <laughs> some of these stats, right? That's, that's definitely <laughs> scary. For me, he's the best Akali in the tournament, and it's Woo! crazy to see. He is so fun to watch. We saw a little bit of those replays as Silas was popping too. And so him working with Piosik has been a boon for this team and their current success. Speaking of the Akali, this graphic does nicely <laughs> include that. Nice. Recency. And this is something that I wanted to talk about a little bit for Zeku, because although he has really high win rates on the Akali and the Silas, you can see from the rest of his picks that hasn't been his main success. So the mm -hmm. fact that we're seeing the Akali and Silas coming back into the meta has really helped him on the world stage. But I am curious to see as we go forward, especially when we get into our playoffs, if we end up seeing this guy getting the Akali and the Silas banned away, yeah. and then what are his fallbacks going to be? All right, well, there you have it. Simple as that. For DRX, it's win here. You lock yourselves a spot as well because top cannot reach four wins today. For GAM, they're looking to play spoiler and force us into some tiebreakers later on in the day. We've got Captain Flowers, we've got Vettius, and we've got Azale taking over to close things out for the rest of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to see you. I'm here with my good buddy Azale and a long lost friend of mine. Three years since you and I got to cast together, Vettius. It's good to see you, man. It's really good to see you, Flowers. I've missed your voice, man. You know, it's just so good to have right in my ear and get to talk to you again. The energy is going to be electric. The fans are already super hyped after the bangs we've had today. So without further ado, let's get trained to draft. Absolutely. And I mean, Gam already pulled off one huge upset today. If they can pull off another here against DRX, then Top are still in it with a chance. But they do need some help from Gam. Yeah, they're going to need some help. Let's go ahead, jump in, see what this draft looks like. That last one was a little wild. So let's see how things shake out in this. We've got Set, 
Sejuani, Azir, Caitlyn, all banned away. Some pretty standard stuff here with the Azir, Caitlyn, and Sejuani bans. Set's been getting a few plays, though, recently. Yeah, Set feels more targeted towards Katie, who has been playing that. You know, this is more of a game special, less the meta, and more targeting the player himself. Uh, but we do have all of the big tanks still up and available, uh, you know, for now when you're thinking about the Maokais, the Orns, uh, things like that that have been actually very, very popular. I'm also thinking about this Carthus pick. Earlier on in the day, we did see actually Rogue removing it in the second phase of Bands, trying to limit the impact that Levi can have on his champions. The question yep. is, what direction will they choose to go with it? Interesting that DRX choose to ban away the Yumi on the blue side. Typically, that is left up on blue, but this is DRX saying, you know what? In the event that you choose not to ban a GAM, we don't want to play it. There's actually other priorities that we have our eyes on. The question is, what will those priorities be? And when we talk about highly prioritized champions, Maokai has been one of those here at the World Championship thus far, but he is the final ban of the first phase here for GAM, and that means Aatrox is open, Aatrox is locked, and Fiora right. will answer the challenge right next to a Kalista. Yeah, very quick answer here for Kiaya, but the, the, the question is, can he actually stand up you know, to the laning here from Kengen? Uh, because we've seen Fiora come out a lot. It has not been very successful unless it is the very top top laners in the tournament that are actually playing it. Oh my word, are they going to do it again? We already saw their answer to the Kalista last game. I think the Ash is incredibly potent, and we know that they're happy to blind pick it. DRX just being given the same formula as before. All we'll right. see once again, Ash Heimerdinger in the bot lane. All right, well, this time we're not going to get a support Nasus because that was useless last game. Ooh, but the Syndra, she can take the turret and put it somewhere else. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Counterpoint, it's going mid lane. Yeah. Uh, She's like the master. But I like where your head is at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, the, I got the strategies planned out here. But we will get the Syndra there for the side of Gam into the second half of the band. Akali coming out as that first ban. If Syndra's in the mid lane, she does not want Akali jumping on top of her constantly. Posing that threat, I like this band coming up with Gam. I wonder if Gam will also look to remove the Silas when we saw that win percentage graphic. And when you think about Zekka's most comfortable champions, Melee, AP, individual agency is really yeah. the name of the game for this man in the mid lane. So taking both Akali and the Syndra away, let, even if you don't consider Silas to necessarily be the strongest matchup, it may be something that you just want to remove. As I'm saying that, the LeBlanc now taken off, another AP mid laner that does give you a lot of agency in terms of the 1v1. So Gam Taylor. KT and really setting him up for success. Meanwhile, DRX will target the jungle. Lee Sin and Graves banned away from these guys heading into the second half here. So we see the AD carry, we see the top laner, we see the mid laner. What will pick number four be here for GAM? A little bit of time left, making sure they're utilizing the entirety of those precious seconds to think about that one. What's it gonna be, fellas? Jarvin locked in. All right, jungle. okay. It, interesting to see that they, they do actually go jungle here. Obviously, they, they can just grab their support on five. Support has already been taken for the other team. So maybe they're feeling this is a bit of a contested pick. I wouldn't be surprised to see Zekka go towards something like an Ari, something a little bit more mid gamey It feels like it kind of fits this comp. That is something that he did play uh, quite a bit, but he's just straight back towards the Silas. Yep, it looks like he's going to stick with comfort. When we look at so far his performance in group stage, it has just been Akali Silas. Um, they are his comforts, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the Vi again. Like, this is very reminiscent of what we saw in the last matchup yeah. when they played against Rogue. They could just run back the same comp, of course, with the Silas, with the Akali being changed out, but no, they will change things Whoa. up. David. Oh, that and was an in instant lock. Wait, it's is it your support? Support. <laughs> support. <laughs> oh, the, the, ma the master of home refurbishment oh my back God. to going down to the ball lane. Wait, let's let's wait and see. Let's wait and see before we get too too excited about this. But I, I assume it is going to be Sindra Sapori here. You're right, man. I completely didn't give it get even a chance. Last pick here of the Anivia. Oh, nice. Who was, oh, I was watching a Champions Q game. I think it was Knight versus someone else that actually showcased the Anivia into Silas matchup to me. And it is so oppressive for the Silas. Like every time you try to approach the wave, it becomes so difficult to actually play that matchup out. But the fact that they decided to pivot that Syndra away, kind of giving them the bait and switch, that false sense of security, and then bringing it down to the bot lane. Wow, this is definitely going to catch DRX off guard. The question is, will it be a better answer than the Nazis? Yeah, I mean, we would hope. It's, it's really, <laughs> well, it's, it's not hard to be better than the Nazis. Yeah, let's be I honest. It's, it's a low bar. Yeah, it's a low failed. bar. It's like, can you limbo under this? Well, the bar is 12 feet high. Yes, <laughs> I can just walk. I don't need to. Uh, <laughs> but. 
My, my question is just like, are you focusing too much on this interaction of being able to pick up the turrets and throw them, right? Like, is there too much of a focus on this? Because yes, you can fish for picks with uh, with Scatter the Week and whatnot, but you're still gonna get nonstop poked by Volley and, and Heimerdinger Rockets, right? Like that is, yeah. is kind of my concern here, is that the poke there, <laughs> as we see the beautiful <laughs> two alpacas just <laughs> gracefully laying in the field there. Not sure why that's at a League of Legends event. Just having a good old time, man. <laughs> I am so excited for this game now. After seeing that switch at the very end of the draft, getting the Anivia here in mid lane, a champion we do not get a lot yeah. of in professional so, play. You know, I think what we should do now is I should be the play by play and you should be the color caster. Now that you've, you've proven your superior knowledge, you knew it was going to be Singe support. I doubted you, so. Buddy, uh, I got I'll, uh, I'll handle the talking fast. I got some bad news for you. That's still not Skarner. I don't have it. <laughs> so. There's no butt twist on yeah, Syndra? Yeah, unfortunately, oh. I do not think that, that dark technology exists. All right, my bad. But when I see Anivia, I think of a champion that can make life incredibly difficult for short-ranged opponents. And when you look at the top side of the map for you DRX, yeah, it's Viego, it's Aatrox, it's Silas. I think this could be a really big opportunity to pop off for Kane. Now, as a reminder, GAM are eliminated. They cannot qualify for the quarterfinals. However, they can still give Top Esports an opportunity to qualify. If they're able to beat DRX here, then there is a world with which Top still have control over their own destiny. But if DRX win, it means that it is the fight between DRX and Rogue for Top Seed coming out of this group. Exactly, it's the NA special. You can't make it out of groups, but you can drag somebody <laughs> down with you. You can torpedo <laughs> someone else to make and Levi sure you did don't spend go some time alone. in NA. He so. certainly did. Yes. All right, all right. Let's see where things are going to start out here on this one as runes are coming up on your screen right now. Everything's looking pretty standard here. Electrocute on the Anivia for some of those quick snappy trades. Yep, yep, not going to be going for a spellbook or anything like that. It is more uh, of an aggressive option. You can see that Barrel had pre-placed all three of his turrets down in bot lane. So that really does guarantee you the push. And they're going to be playing pretty far up here and looking heavily for the poke. So a lot of this bot lane I do think is going to come down to, you know, how much poke can you land on this Syndra? Because Syndra is the one that I think really is going to be pressured to be landing her spells because she's very squishy. And if you're taking too many of these volleys, too many of those rockets from Heimer, uh, things are going to get rough. But look at Levi clearing down towards bot. Yeah, it does look like that he has his eyes on a very early level three. The ward ball, well, the turret actually didn't come out of the barrel. Battle ward. And Katie also going to drop a deep ward. So they have information on where Pyoshik is. Gam have all the information they need in order to set up a play towards the bot side of the map. Gonna quickly look at BA and see what he's taken as his second point. So he does have the scout of the week second. Okay. They are setting up for a potential gank here in the bot lane. But this information here should should let them know that he could be around. The fact that he's not doing his blue still, right? You know, they, they have to be worried about what sort of a path could he actually be doing. You know, wh where could he be on the map? So you have to be expecting some sort of a gank to come in. And he does now retreat back to that blue, so he will be spotted. Especially on a champion like Jarvan. Yeah. Throughout the history of League of Legends, this is a champion known for having some of those strong, surprising early ganks. And especially up against a team like Gam and a jungler like Levi, you know he's not going to be shy for trying to make some of those moves. Yeah, and you can already see in terms of the bot lane setup, DRX have a lot less control than they had before. Levi should be able to secure this Scuttle Crab as well. Yep. Pyoshik now on the same side of the map. The question is, what will happen in mid lane? Tells me Zekta has a push. Good stun comes out on the bot side. VA at half HP. Deft under a little pressure now, but Styles gonna have to be careful. Cleanses away the ignite. Barrel fires off some rockets. It's Gam left with lower health bars here as the dust settles. I mean, it's kind of Armageddon in the bot lane. Everyone's so low. Levi, oh, he's not going to be spotted. The turret has such low vision range. The it, turret can't see. They don't know he's and there. Levi is ready to go. Death wants to fire back. He flashes in, but Levi's ready to go. It's first blood of the style in style. But Piyoshi makes his way into the bottom lane now. Levi will protect his duo. security the vision range on it was so small that he just walks right past it gets in behind him right as death is flashing forward to try to get that 2v2 kill surprise levi is there wow gam really catching drx off guard and already i feel like the syndra showcasing slightly more than the nasus could last game <laughs> with that potential gang setup and you already highlighted his ale the fact that this turret gave them that false sense of security yeah. not offering that vision the ward was already placed earlier. Levi cleared it out with the sweep, but the flash in from BA doesn't quite land the stun. And Def see this window where he has to make the play because the moment that the Levi flag comes in, he's like, I'm in danger. I have to commit. 
and he ends up falling short. Well, it's so interesting, right? Because I, I wonder, like, did he even kind of internalize that, that Jarvan was there yet, right? Because he sidesteps this scatter, he sees the flash is used, he's like, ability on cooldown, maybe we can get a 2v2 kill. Because the flag comes over the wall right about that same time, it's that close timing, where I wonder if he if he even realized, because he could have just flashed backwards and potentially, you know, gotten out of there. So uh, it is a really, really tight timing on that play. We have consistently seen from Cam today a hyper-aggressive early game. They've typically been known for their team fighting, but they're looking for more aggression. They're attacking this bot lane. And the thing is, okay, this gank doesn't quite work out, but it alleviates pressure. It stops this bot lane from consistently pushing out that wave, because the bot uh -oh. lane is now in danger. Oh, uh -oh. Katie, this is not good. Zek has eaten a whole hearty breakfast there. The egg has been popped. And that means that Katie is now a target. And Nivea can be such a problem when the passive is ready. It can make it so you don't want to commit too many resources just to not get a kill anyway. But now that that's down, that puts a big old target right there. But also good positioning from Katie. You know, got close enough to the tower, knew he didn't actually have to spend the flash or anything there, knew he was going to be able to sit through and just have that passive popping back up. And now Katie's level six. So what happens in mid lane? Push and leave. <laughs> yep. Nice, nice. Nice for an Anivia once you unlock that ultimate. Changes the pattern, changes the laning a lot. Still, just that one kill on the board here. You can see the XP coming up on the left side of your screen. It's level seven for all four solo laners. Death, the only non-solo laner to have his ultimate available. So keep your eyes out for those enchanted crystal arrows flying across the map, seeing if any plays are able to be made or even supported with that global power. Well, and honestly, I would just call Pioshek down to bot lane, and, and if you bounce the wave here and they're coming out, there's no flash on BA. The style is not gonna have flash either, but he will have cleanse soon. So it would be a very easy kill through lane if you can actually get in onto the Syndra uh, and hit him with that crystal arrow at six. All righty, Zekka will continue clearing out things here in mid. Kiaya versus Kingen here in the top side. So much focus on bottom early on. We haven't really been able to pay much attention towards this top part of the map. Fiora versus Aatrox matchup pretty even right now. And this is something that Azale and I were talking about backstage, which is how do you deal with the Aatrox problem? Because so far at this tournament, a number of different top laners have tried to showcase answers to the Aatrox, and the most successful one has been Fiora. However, that's only been in the hands of some of the best top laners in the world. In the yes. hands of Seus, in the hands of Breathe. When you, when you see these matchups, you need to understand the dynamics, and you need to be able to build advantages. And we'll see if Gam can find that oh, advantage right now. Okay, Kingen, one versus three. He's got to stand his ground. World Ender comes out, flashing away, dashing away, trying to fight back if he can. And he's oh, Crystal Arrow from all the way back home. Kingen will live, and Gam will fall. A double kill back over to the Aatrox, and D. Oh, the attempted dive from Gam, but the door is closed by Dev. Cross map arrow bails out Kingen and he turns around the play. All three members fall. What a huge moment for DRA. On a second, BA. BA flashing away from those turrets there. The burn won't be enough to kill him on its own. But I said it, boys. I said you gotta look out for the arrows flying across to affect these other lanes. And sure enough, Death hits the mark. And I will say that the Aatrox problem is now an Aatrox Woo! problem. <laughs> uh, the man, he played this extremely well too. Notice when the Flash comes out to dodge the, dodge the initial engage from Levi. Then he's going to sidestep the Anivia Q as well. And the arrow is coming up from downtown as well. While Kingen has tower aggro and is still underneath the tower. That very likely should have been a kill. He gets the heal back from his passive. Then he also gets the additional health from his runes. And he's able to turn it around and secure that final kill. Double kill for Kingen. Beautifully played for the whole DRX roster. And you can even see the communication there. Kingen was actually yeah. kiting towards the right side. And the arrow's coming right along that left side. As it's about to arrive, he actually kites back against the wall, which pulls them into the line of that arrow, making sure that it would land. Really smart stuff there from Kingen. You know, positioning perfectly in the arrow from base there from Death, making all the difference. And now it is Gam again on the dragon, but DRX 
are coming in from all sides. Okay, Levi's already got the objective. Pioshik has to get back out. Scatter the weak, won't scatter anyone other than a turret. But Zekka's made his way into the fight. There's the Cataclysm. Zekka trying to stay alive here in the pit, but he's 1v3, and Levi's got the kill. One's gonna come back, and we're trading one for one equal so far. The fight continues. Diego looks for the reset, but a double kill back to Levi. Now Death will try to kite this one out. They got turrets, they got bullets, they got everything they need. And Gam is trying to find the solution, and they found it. Barrel's on the run, and Levi's on the hunt. Katie's right behind him to provide the damage. The stun flies out, but the flash is true. Katie, gotta be careful on this. The, the turret gets dropped. Katie barely walking past it. And when it looks like disaster has struck and Gam have no other options, they just find another fight again. Beautiful four versus four at the Dragon. Gam equalized the kills once more. You just gotta love the, the, the play style here from Gam. If you're behind, the best way to come back, fight. If you're ahead, the best way to increase your lead, fight. fight. If you're even, best way to get a lead, it's fighting, baby. And Gam are going right back at it again. Yoshik went over the wall, trying to get the steal, couldn't quite find it. But DRX decide they can still go for this fight here, and Zekka goes in from the side, but there's not really that much follow-up, as Pioshek wasn't in range, I think, for the Callista Ultimate until just now. And as he comes in, it's a great collapse from Gam, bursting out the mid laner. And you think the window with which Pioshek is able to change is enough for them to be able to win the fight, but a great flash from KD to escape the reset opportunity from the Viego was enough to get that kill, and then the moment that KD rejoins the fight, they have the numbers advantage, and they're able to get that pick onto death. A much-needed set of skill, uh, kills in order to keep Gam in this game. But look at the health bars, just so low there. Now Kingen, nice sidestep on the parry. That was critical, but Levi's gonna look. Levi's still trying oh, to get it. The sidestep back. Kingen is so clean up here. Oh my god, the early tier uh, two boots and BA on the bot side is just gone. Was that an Ash arrow perhaps? It looks like it was just fired off recently. Okay. So I'm gonna assume uh, that that was an Ash ulti catching him out there. Uh, that is definitely a dangerous part about Syndra. In general, you are pretty low mobility, you are pretty squishy, and Syndra's support, even more so. Of course, the second that Flowers is on the desk, they decide that violence is the only way for the game to be able to play out. <laughs> it's a PvP game, Vettius. <laughs> we need some of that action here, and this game is delivering nine kills in 12 minutes. It's resulted in a one and a half thousand gold lead for DRX, but it's Gam who have the first Drake. It's Gam who are unafraid, like you were talking about, Isaac, to keep fighting, keep scrapping, no matter the game state. Absolutely. My big concern, though, for Gam is, is you haven't drafted full team fight, right? You've drafted this side lane pick in the Fiora that I think is going to have some trouble actually joining in the 5v5. So let's see it again. I'm assuming it wasn't Ash Arrow catching him out. It was, no flash available. Just nicely aimed there from death. The CC chain is layered over top. The grenade is guaranteed. Towers are dropped in. And you can see that engaged combo there coming through from Death and Barrel. Yeah, the bot lane from DRX is incredibly lethal, but Levi is on the map again. 60 CS, 12 and a half minutes in, it doesn't matter. He only has blood in his eyes and he's looking to find more. And there's no flash on Death or Barrel, so. Uh, there is potential to get aggressive, but they know he's there now because he actually dropped the pink ward in yeah. the brush and they saw the support and the AD outside. So Zekka and Pioshik on their way. That means DRX wants the counter punch. And here we go. Gam's gonna start it off looking for Barrel. They'll get the kill, but now how can they deal with the rest? Levi's gonna be the focus here with the start as Style gets away with the Cataclysm versus Cataclysm combat. Zekka kills the AD carry and Death takes down the jungler. DRX win it two to one. I respect the confidence from Gam to force that fight when they know DRX are on their way down towards the bot lane, but they only end up getting a single kill. DRX walk away with two and they continue to extend the gold lead. Yeah, they're looking good. And Barrel, you know, does go down, but a uh, good job to actually set this up. You know, you'll, you'll watch him coming in from the river. You can see on the minimap, uh, they are heading down, but they're actually playing around that one ward, and they don't show until Barrel steps forward. So I do give Barrel the credit that this is a bit of a bait, that he is willing to give his, his life up there. They knew yeah. that J4 was in the side brush. He goes forward, gets Gam to commit, as Zekka and Pyoshik hadn't shown on that pink ward until they had already engaged. They collapse, they get more than they lost. I think it's a smart play, and it's a good death for Barrel. Good death. That's a very EU saying. I'm proud of you as well. <laughs> there we go. There we go, I've baby. I used it a lot. I do in my games. <laughs> I'm making space. It was a good death. Trust me, guys. Exactly. My Just team create, doesn't usually go for it. Creating a little space. <laughs> That's all about. But the plates have now fallen. We can see both teams getting a 
few plates here and there on either side, but it was DRX coming away with more. Still 7 to 5, still about a 2,000 gold lead here for DRX, but the next Drake is spawning now. Exactly that, Flowers. Keep your eyes on the teleports of both top laners because Kingen has already made his way from top into mid. Kiaia is looking for that level 11. In fact, gonna go back to base, spend that gold. Looks to join the fray. For the time being, he will TP into the mid lane now. It's DRX that have control over the river. Oh no! Kingen just got to experience oh. the Anivia with Everfrost melee experience. And it's not fun. And, and now, no ulti. No. Yes, he, he can base and TP, but like, do they even want to fight for it? Because no ult on Aatrox is actually a massive difference with your combat power. I don't think it's worth DRX grabbing for this. Oh, Piosha getting caught here a little bit, but now Styles got to get back away. Volley shot out, just keeping Gam back. They are grouped up as five. The top. Yep, DRX, they're yeah, they're ready to surrender this one. They're just going to put the teleport of the top laner back into the top half of the map. And it's Gam getting the second trade. I think it's the right call. Kyoya has no TP, neither does KD. So you're going to get a lot of damage down on this top tower. You're going to deny some minions here as well. DRX wanted to fight it, but without the ult on Aatrox, it's it's just a different beast when you have that available. And he is really their strongest member right now, so I don't think yeah. it would be intelligent to fight without it. I think DRX also have a very clear window of getting a good cross map Full tower. Well. You can see this will be the exchange of towers. This isn't a safe play for Kiaia to make, because if you look at the minimap as well, you'll notice Viego already starting off that Rift Herald as they get the push out in mid, though. More fighting in bot lane. Oh, BA, he's only at 300 HP. They can't throw him underneath the turret to try to continue this just yet. He gets himself away. Levi's coming in. They want the kill in a barrel here. Cataclysm in. Should be able to get back out. Levi throws down a flag. Katie's coming in, trying to pick up Dev. Forces a flash out of him as well. And it's an overload in the bottom lane from Gam looking to take down this tier one turret. I mean, what was Barrel thinking? He's, he's trying to go for a solo queue play there. He's, he's 1v2, his is not even in the bit. He's trying to go for the one shot on BA. Ends up not only giving up a kill, he gives up the tower. He costs his own flash. He costs Def his flash, who tries to come in and bail him out. But this is the story being told elsewhere as mid lane that Herald was taken. We mentioned Piotr going after that. They use it, they break through mid, they do the damage to the tier two, and that one's almost gone now as well. Yeah, props to DRX. They're playing the map incredibly well. Every time the Gam tries to force these fights, it's very easy to get sucked into them, you know? Try and match them to say, you know what, we're better players. We can outplay them. We have the comp. We can deal with this. But DRX is saying, you know what, we'll give it up. Okay, Barrel loses life, we lose a bot tab. What do we get back? Two towers in the mid lane. They continue to extend this gold lead. Two and a half thousand is now the advantage that they have. And they're very quickly getting to these two item spikes, which means that when the next dragon spawns in three minutes' time, DRX is going to be in a much better position to contest. And that's always one of the things you got to focus on, is how many completed items are there. It makes the gold lead feel so much heavier when you're getting the spikes of those passive, those active, those completions. As you can see, Gam in a very dark and scary jungle uh -oh. of DRX. And it's Kingen who's going to be found out. He pops the world in. They're trying to get away. Waste as much time of theirs as he can. He's running straight towards an enemy turret. But look at the map, right? It's, it's, it's the play to mid, right? They're giving up so much. Look at all those members that are actually down there trying to play uh, for bot. But Kingen might even get out. Kingen's keeping the oh. dream alive as he goes on the miracle run. Now topside, it's Kiaia having to escape in a one versus two. That's brutal. They just commit so many members down towards bot. Four members from Gam go down to try to take down Kingen. They lose their tier two mid. They're going to lose the tier two top as well here. Those are really valuable. BA trying to get up here and see if they can make a counter play, but there's more DRX members filing up. It's just very smart play overall from DRX. They're not getting sucked into this team fight that Gam is trying to force. The whole approach from Gam right now is attack the side lanes, look for picks, claw our way back into the game by slowing DRX down as much as possible. But DRX are constantly setting up the map. When Kingen was being attacked in the bot lane, they had mid push and they had top push, which means that whatever lane got attacked, they could cross map somewhere else. DRX are just recognizing how Gam are trying to play the game and mitigating it as much as possible. Kingen's Aatrox is flying around this map like Trick 2G Udyr, just <laughs> laughing at everybody. It's everything except the emote spam as they can't catch him. They waste all their time. D 
DRX has built a 4,000 gold lead yeah. with this map play, with this macro play. And now we're at a very interesting point with Baron being a minute away and the next Dragon only being a little bit more. And it becomes so problematic because Kingen actually almost has gold, you know, for his next item, very likely a Death Dance. Uh, and, and Kiaya, you know, if, if you can't actually win inside, you're just locked into your tower as this Fiora. You're not getting pressure on the map. You're going to be worse when you're grouping as well. So I do think it's kind of forcing Gam into this, this play pattern that they've been in for the last while where it is just group, try to fight, try to find 5v5, try to make something happen because they have no pressure on sides and they're kind of getting slowly bled out. You can see as far as the, the vision is, is concerned, their farthest forward ward is like really that and I guess they have one lane ward, but they've got nothing. And you can see now DRX once again setting up for the next objective. They're keeping the Zekka top because he does have his TP available. Kingen just invested his TP bot to make sure that he's on pace with his mid laner who just forced the midway push and have the top lane push as well. Just overall great map movements ready for the Dragon spawning in about 20 seconds, which they now have control over. Exactly. They're going to be able to move around this river, sweep out some vision, put down whatever their own resources they need to. And especially when you're playing something like a Heimerdinger, being there first, having control, having the chance to get a jump on somebody goes a long way. But DRX are now going to be the ones having to check in the game. They backed up, they made sure they were able to clear out some of their own jungles, some of their own waves there in mid. So it's Gam with control over the pit. Gam grouped up as five. A teleport brings Zekka in. They're rushing and in. Leo they are, are ready to challenge. Kalista, the rent. Keep it in mind, it matters oh, so reset. much here for the Drakes, but it resets the pace. Oh, the, the, arrow. the arrow is fired, but it missed. The damage still flies out. The dragon's going over to Gam. But what about the fight? King into the back line here with the World Ender looking for a big Q3, but he's not able to find it just yet. Death goes on a killing spree. The bird is down, but egg. not quite fully. A double kill back over to Death. They are being crushed by DRX, and Gam have only one man. Standing a triple kill to the DRX 80 carry. Depth goes huge, and Biozik stays alive with the stolen Anivia, utilizing the passive. He's the one that became the egg there on the Viego. Stays alive because of it, and now they're straight over to the Baron. Gam hard committed to the Dragon, but the reset cost them critical time. And then Kingen coming over the wall made him pay. It was just, it looked good initially for Gam, but it ended in disaster once more. Gam now looking to steal away the Baron. Can Levi make the miracle happen? Levi getting out there. The Ash Arrow shot over the wall to try to lock him down, but it hits Katie instead, who just now used the teleport to try to get in range. But it's DRX after that massive dragon fight. Yeah, Gam might have got a soul point, but DRX got so much more. Wow, so let's have a look back at this fight. And the dragon reset was both a good and a bad Thing. The arrow ends up missing largely because of this reset. But you can also see this flank from Kingen on the right hand side. Immediate access onto the back line. But look at Zeka. He gets forced out incredibly quickly. And you think, okay, maybe this fight is good. But the moment that the health comes back from Kingen, Kyoshik steals away the Anivia and the egg. Getting procs there means the Gam realize, oh no, we can't win this fight. There is no threat <laughs> onto Depth in the back line. It is too funny, man. That you get the passive when you actually I didn't even take know the you could do there. that. Yeah, you get the passive. Look at him having a laugh. <laughs> I mean, they know it is actually hilarious, saved by the Anivia passive. Nobody knows that because this champion hasn't been seen in 12 years, so. <laughs> yeah, Anivia is uh, not exactly one of those meta picks, <laughs> but this time around, man, one, two, and two hasn't played out well enough for Gam so far in this game. They're 8,000 gold down. I feel like their only shot left here would be if they'd be able to find that Hextech soul somehow yeah. here in three minutes. Uh, I mean, they do a pretty good wave there with the Anivia, you know, throwback to, to the old days when Anivia was super popular. You could delay a lot of these games out, but it is going to be difficult for them to do it because Anivia is really their only good wave there. And look at Kiaya taking that alt rocket there from Barrel, just chunks him down incredibly low. I've just been so impressed with how DRX have come in prepared this week. They realized how big of a pick Callista was for so many of the other teams. And to have Ash as an answer ready with the Heimerdinger paired alongside it has done so much for DRX's early game. And now they have so much control over the map. They did the same thing against Rogue. They're looking to do the same thing here. And with a win, DRX are still in the fight for first of this group. And they're continuing to choke Gam out of the map. That tier two turret in mid already gone. That was a while ago. Thanks to that Rift Herald play that we talked about back when it happened. The pressure being maintained here in the bottom lane. You can see Kiaya just trying to be a Fiora that's behind in the game, farming up in top side. There's not a whole lot else for him to do. DRX 
continue to move forward, trying to take these turrets. Anivia is such a brick wall to get through in these situations. Katie's under pressure. Levi has to get back away, and Katie, with the defensive flash, stays alive. But the turret will no longer be defended. 30 seconds still to go here with the Baron. Still pretty good job. They actually delayed a lot. They're not even going to lose an inhibitor tower here. Uh, they're going to get the GP out of King and actually defend the Tier 1. A Style was holding it down in mid lane, so yes, the Tier 2 bot will fall down. Uh, but Gam do pretty effectively stall out this Baron with the Anivia here and buy themselves at least a little bit more time. All right, so with that time, that 70 seconds of time, I got to ask you guys, Bettius, how do Gam secure this soul? What's the sauce? What's the recipe here? Okay, have you ever made spaghetti? Uh, yeah. Have you ever then thrown it at a wall? Uh, yeah. Well, that's what Gam needs to do. <laughs> they need to throw it all at the wall. They need to throw it all at the throw wall. Throw it at the wall, see what's in it. Exactly that. I mean, all like, right. DRX, while they've been good at setting up position uh -oh. around this objective, uh -oh. Levi, gonna get out of that sticky situation. The problem is that DRX, oh, that are, oh, oh, good flash from Levi. Okay. He will be able to sidestep that one. 30 seconds now are all Gam have in order to go and contest. And the thing is, you might argue, surely they can just stall. The problem is, I would argue that from a scaling perspective, things are only going to get better from DRX. And Gam's best window and opportunity is probably to fight this next dragon. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go and fight for it. The ideal opportunity would for Stahl to get his last item. He can get it before the fight, but I don't think he's going to have enough time. It's just so hard to get in. They're going to try to play through mid, but Zekka here is zoning on the side. Depth is there. Doesn't have his ultimate Thanks. just yet, but oh, the ulti grenade! Oh, the bounce stuns too. Levi's going to find himself alone in the back. While Kingen pushes forward with Zekka in the stasis right next to him, Levi's going to be killed off first, and Depth continues his domination. They're traded back one for one. Zekka's taken out. Depth still able to free fire, but Katie's doing a good job zoning him away. It's one for one, 4v4 and the fight stops. Critically though, Levi is down and Kyoshik is still alive here, so they can go over towards this dragon. That is a TP back in from Kiaya, it looks like though. Uh, Katie coming as well, they're actually gonna double TP back in. They wanna try to see if they can get something done, but Kiaya face checking. Oh, Kiaya! Kiaya, what are you doing? Walking into the brush like that. He'll try to get back away, back to safety, but he's only going back to the fountain. Piyoshik gets the kill. The face check results in his face meeting the floor. Gamma gonna be sent back to base, and DRX are in a prime position to secure this Drake and delay that soul. They've now extended their gold lead to about 9,000, but I was gonna say, prior to that pick, I've been so impressed with how Gamma keeping these fights surprisingly close, even though they're at such a massive disadvantage. There always seem like windows in these fights where Gam can very much win. Absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of it is about their positioning, right? They're cutting back into this corridor here, which is going to be pretty difficult to enter. So even though they get that double stun, you're having to walk through Anivia in this area. It becomes very, very difficult. Everyone is getting locked up into that Anivia ulti, trying to walk through the wall, really clogging things up and making it difficult to get to the carries. And you can see how dangerous of a position Deft was in there, locked in the Javan ultimate, in the Anivia ultimate as well. Unfortunately, there was no real other additional threat onto that backline, which meant the Deft didn't even have to burn a summon a spell in that last exchange. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if KD could actually get to something like a real third damage item, if you could somehow delay the game, get towards a death cap or whatever, they have a real chance, but that is so far off. Yeah. Uh, and he is working on a Morello right now. Uh, so yes, of course, this is a, a, a super, super long shot, but I do think compositionally, Gam, Gam can win these fights, right? I do think it's very difficult to actually get through the Jarvan, you know, get through everything and, and get in onto some of these carries in the back line. So uh, maybe the miracle fight can happen and they do still have a while if they can delay. Okay, Gam. Kiaya in trouble again, reposts the Infernal Chains, but that's the entire enemy team. Kiaya can't get out, and DRX kill the enemy top laner. Baron has got to be the call. A bit of sweet situation for Gam to find themselves in. They've made these fights look very competitive, and now they're a man down. DRX are not going to give them a window to come and contest this, and it looks like Gam are going to concede it. But this is Levi that we're talking about. Is he going to face check? Levi walks up, but he walks right back out. The Baron at about one-third HP. Gam cannot get their jungler in there in time, so Baron will be secured again by DRX. Yeah, DRX moving further and further ahead now. Good 11,000 gold in the lead at this point with the Baron buff again. No outer towers here left to take. I do think they're going to have to play through multiple lanes because Anivia, I still think, can stuff the Baron push unless you're willing to actually try to dive, uh, which is very dangerous. But that being said, they've just really struggled to get 
Kiaia involved in the game in any sort of a positive way, right? He really yep. hasn't had any side lane pressure. He hasn't been effective when he's grouped. He's getting picked off a lot. Oh, uh, this, this Fiora really just has been the kind of key vulnerability here uh, on Gam. The four-man squad are doing all right, but uh, they need to find some way to get Fiora involved in this game. They certainly do. Right now, she can't really offer anything in the side lane. She can't really offer much value in the team fight. We'll see what Gam can do to turn things around. Their only bright spark right now is that there is a soul at their disposal. Obviously not going to be spawning for another two minutes, but if they can secure it, there's a world in which the comeback can be real. But DRX seem to have such a firm grip on this game. They're looking to join their LCK brothers in terms of the group stage performance. And on that two minute timer, the thing about it is, it lines up so closely with the Baron buff. It means that DRX will be able to use this Baron to control the map up until that point. Deft hits an arrow. Katie, all right, all right. But just look at how well-timed these waves are. All three waves crashed at the same time there from DRX. So manipulating the waves, making sure that they're all landing around that same time was very nice. Uh, but can push forward in mid, they clear that out. Right now on top though, there's no Anivia there to actually stall this out. So they're getting pushed on multiple sides here. Katie cannot be anywhere. He just he can't answer every wave at the same time, and no one else can really wave their butt to Zanivia. Yep, you've only got one Anivia on the team. Everybody else can't do it. And now that Def up here in the top lane, he's got the ability to zone a lot of the other players on Gamma away. Meanwhile, you still have Kiaya trying to defend bottom, Katie trying to defend middle. It is a three-pronged attack from DRX, and the attack will miss its arrow here in the top lane. But the volleys are still flying out. Barrel goes for the stun. They try to use the wall and catch Barrel out, but he flashes away to safety. Now Katie's under pressure. If you kill Katie, you win the game. As DRX takes out the first in him in the top lane, First, or second inhibitor turret, excuse me, down in the mid lane. Third inhibitor turret down in the bottom lane. Mid lane inhibitor's about to fall. If they take all of these out all at the same time, they are perfectly synced up. Gam's coming out, Levi's going in. Barrel in some trouble, stuck here with the Cataclysm as Kingen has to get himself away now. Tuki Eye is gonna be taken very low and finally killed. Death goes godlike, and DRX go in for more. That's four down, Katie's the only one alive, but the Everfrost seals his Fate and DRX will earn their place in the quarterfinals. A phenomenal performance from DRX. Back to back games with the Ash and Heimerdinger bot lane. And this bot lane continues to look dominant along with the rest of their team. They've earned their place in the quarterfinals. They have looked very strong in this group. And DRX are a team that many people underestimated, but now a team worth fearing. Absolutely, and now they move into a tie here at the top of the group with Rogue. Yeah. And this group will be decided in these next couple games here. If both teams are able to be top, they'd be tied at five and one. It would be a tiebreaker there. If both teams lose the top, then it's four and two, tiebreaker there. So the only situation in which this will be decided without a tiebreaker would be one of them wins, one of them loses to really separate themselves out. Uh, but it's been impressive week two here thus far from DRX, bringing out some real creativity. The Heimer Ash showcasing that to great effect in back-to-back -back games. And of course, with DRX's victory here, this will be Gam's last appearance at this year's World Championship. It's yeah. been a long time since we saw them, and I think that everyone was a little bit worried last week after we didn't get to see as much from them, but this week, they really had a massive impact. And I'm just gonna let the crowd do the rest. Sorely missed on the international stage for way too long. The fans are glad to have them back. I'm glad to have them back. And they got to really make their mark on this group and on the tournament here. Hey, man, they saved Europe, OK? <laughs> they did it for us. Okay? Europe was you not yet dead. <laughs> they potentially not saved get you. get to see <laughs> Bettius and Shox on the edge of their seats cheering for Gam behind the scenes. <laughs> Wait, what do we got here? Oh, no. <laughs> I have loved what we got to see out of DRX yeah. here today so far, though. I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not we get that tiebreaker at the top, them versus Rogue. What's it going to be?
I mean, I, I, th I think we're kind of heading towards it with how Top has looked, but who knows, right? Is Top going to be able to showcase a better performance uh, now that they're out of the group? You know, what kind of mental state are they in? Because that has got to be incredibly disappointing, right? Yeah. People were looking at Top, not even really as a second seed, but like I was calling them seed 1.5 from the LPL. They went 10 games against JDG over the course of two series. And this is a team that was a hair away from being the LPL champions, and now they're out in groups, and it hasn't even looked that close. And that's the thing, to think that they've been a eliminated with two games still left to play. Yeah. No one was expecting them to fall to GAM, but it is a very similar story to what we've seen so far in this tournament, that that poor week one performance, if you can't turn it around yeah. in week two, it can be devastating. And the fact that we have now seen Top be eliminated at the result of TRX winning this game, I think it's a shock to many. The LPL second seed curse continues <laughs> as the first and third seeds historically outperform their second seed brothers and top will not advance. I mean, as much as, as it is a meme, there always seems to be one LPL team that crashes and burns in groups, right? You know, these teams we know are incredibly skilled, and whether it is, you know, the inability for one of the teams to adapt to the meta, or it's just, you know, a poor performance on the day, or whatever it is, uh, it seems to be very, very common. FBX last year, obviously, we're having top this year, but it's been, you know, a number of years where we've seen these favorites go out uh, from the LPL, but of course they have four incredible teams, and the three are probably going to be through, so... It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, props to DRX. We'll see what they can do later against Top Esports as both Rogue and DRX will go up against a team now eliminated. Well, DRX has been a lot of fun to watch here so far today. So now we are joining Shox and translator Jisun on stage with Barrel for the Verizon post-game interview. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. Um, yeah, of course I have to ask about the bot lane picks in these last two games. We have heard a lot about the Heimer, but why was this the right time to pull it out in these last two games? First off, Heimer Dinger, it's fun to play. Yeah. Secondly, I'm good at it. <laughs> I love that. Um, Beryl, I know that you like to watch a lot of streams and like look at what tech you can get out of uh, maybe ideas from other players. So I'd love to know what you thought about the counters that the teams came up with in the Nasus from Rogue and then the Syndra here from GAM. 이제 또 베릴 선수는 언제나 좀 다른 선수분들 방송을 보면서 좀 신문물을 좀 접하고 또 연구하고 하는 걸로 잘 알려져 있는데 오늘 로그에서 등장한 나서스 카운터 하이머 카운터로 등장한 나서스와 또 방금 경기에 등장한 딩거 카운터 신드라 어땠나요? 어 일단 나서스는 이제 예상 밖에 위해서 피겨 가지고 그냥 최대한 이제 나서스의 주력 스킬만 피하자고 생각했고 솔직히 이제 신드라가 원래 좀 미드 쪽에서 많이 힘든데 이 신드라를 서포터가 미드 라이너처럼 완벽하게 쓸수 없다라는 생각이 많아 가지고 그냥 이길 수 있다라고 생각했어요. So Nasus was definitely not something I expected, so I was just trying to always think of some of the major skills that he can use, so I was always keeping that in mind, and also Syndra. It's actually really tough to play against if she's a mid, but I was pretty sure that supports cannot actually play it like midliners do, so, you know, it was not that hard. Okay, well, it was very successful, uh, and with that, you lock yourself in the quarterfinals, and you still have a chance to get first seed. How do you think the rest of the day is going to go as Rogue is playing top and then you're playing top at the end of the day? 네, 이제 8강 진출은 확정되셨고요. 이제 남은 경기에 좀 진행 상황에 따라서 1위 결정전까지도 갈수 있는데 지금 남은 두 팀이 모두 탑 e스포츠를 상대할 예정이에요. 어떤 식으로 예상하고 계신가요? 어, 일단 다른 팀들도 이제 이제 다른 팀들 이 시조 있는 팀들 다 잘한다고 생각해요. 그새 이제 누가 이길지 잘 모르겠는데 저도 이제 팬분들과 같이 경기를 보는 입장에서 즐거운 경기 봤으면 좋겠어요. So, I mean, it's really hard to expect what's going to happen, you know, but at the same time, I'm, I will be on the same page with the fans and all the live crowd here. I just want to have a really entertaining one. Wonderful. Well, let's hope we get that. <laughs> Hansamida Barrel, congratulations and thank you, Jisun. As always, we're going to kick it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk, where we're two for two on Heimer 
Fire support games. Let's go, DRX. Let's go. Locking in a spot to the <laughs> knockout stage by running it back in the bot lane. Ash Heimerdinger. It was a different response this time around from Gam. I think all of us on the desk liked it more. Theoretically, the Syndra into the Heimerdinger. However, it was not enough to overcome the pick. So before we get started, mm -hmm. I got handed this by a fan to add on to the collection. You mean, so you, mean, you, mean you asked oh, here we go. for it. <laughs> Probably, can you yes. even get that over your head? I don't know. Not even a little bit. <laughs> struggle. Yeah. So we're going to do this yeah. very cursed. Oh, God. So here we go. Oh, there, there, there it is. There we go. Perfect. There, there it is. <laughs> I love no, it. it's not going any further. No, that's that's it. <laughs> yeah. so, Too yeah. big a brain in that head over so there. Congrats to DRX. I, actually, I think the Heimerdinger has been a really interesting one because it does seem like a lot of teams have struggled where they haven't been able to figure out exactly how they want to try and play against it. Um, and I think the Syndra was an interesting one, right? You toss the turrets back, you're able to gain a bit of space against it. But again, it just feels like no one's really able to find the answer to actually push back against this Heimerdinger. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think the Heimer pick is definitely yeah. going to start warping drafts from this point forward. But also, Raz, the fact that the Ash has been enabled by it, coming in twice in a row here, it feels like now the AD carry pool as well might start to see some shifts. And that's the fun thing. This usually doesn't happen in the best of ones. We usually right. see... <laughs> With the delay from the best of ones into the best of fives, more creativity there. Uh, we're seeing, starting to see it now. This just makes this world probably the most exciting in the draft. You know who hasn't gone away, though? Who? Aatrox. No, Aatrox oh. still pretty good at the game. <laughs> still pretty powerful pick. Yeah, obviously. I mean, that was a massive pick. I also like pointing out the ass just because, like I said, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't see it sooner. Um, this, though, was really interesting because we got to see something we didn't touch upon in draft yet. Levi on something where he's more hooking up with his laners, making plays in lane. And this was his first gank uh, bot lane, which showed a lot of like sense as to what he wanted to do. Now, it didn't work out that well topside because Ash has such a global presence. Wow. And this completely stymies the play and gets the Aatrox ahead. And I think that could have been such a massive play for Gam as well, if it had worked out, right? It was a mm -hmm. massive wave there. The Aatrox fall was behind. Kiai had actually been doing a decent job as well of keeping control on that lane. And then you just suddenly get this Aatrox, two kills across the board. He's uh, totally fine. And then he starts to pop off in team fights as well. It was just the worst thing for them. But it wasn't over yet, right? This was actually the early dragon where uh, Gam was fighting back. Uh, specifically the Silas that came in, Zekka came in, died early. Um, and so it was nice to see the flashes burnt over the wall to be able to delay the fight. The, for me, it was the Anivia that was a big win. I love seeing Anivia play, and it felt like he actually played a lot of these fights incredibly well. Speaking of Anivia, we all learned something new yeah, today about the Anivia Viego interaction. <laughs> that was a ton of fun. Who knew you also get the passive? Yeah, I had, no I had no idea. I had no idea. I mean, so here's the thing. Uh, Gam put up quite a fight, as you mentioned, picking up three of the Drakes early, too, not to yes. be ignored, the <laughs> fact that they pushed DRX. But it does seem clear to me, Dagda, that DRX has proven themselves worthy with their showing here today to lock up a, a knockout spot. It's the planes buff, right? We're seeing across the board, the more time you kind of get settled in towards this meta, now you get to try and figure out stuff like the Heimerdinger, you're bringing it out to the main stage. It feels like DRX have several different avenues of attack that they can go with, and it makes them so deadly now that they are guaranteed that playoff spot. We've got our two teams locked, but with two games to go, the only thing in question is which of those two teams will be the one seed and which will be the two. We're going to a break, but as we go, Riot is working with Nonprofit Take This to develop a free curriculum on mental health tailored for anyone and everyone in gaming. Head over to takethis.org to access those resources and more for free. Take care of yourself, take care of others. We'll see you back here for Top versus Rogue right after this.
That's the most I can give you. Fine. Then it's time for the ace up my sleeve. My beloved squishy pig with... With original holographic cover art. Hey, Ash, what you selling? Save the references, Jake, from State Farm. I'm saying goodbye. This little piggy went to the game store. You don't have to sell your favorite games. State Farm has coverage options, so you get a rate that fits your budget. Thanks, Jake. Hands off the squish! For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today.